Hello again, YouTube. Today we're going to be looking at this code reader from Launch. It's the C Reader or Creeder Model 9081. So in the interest of full disclosure, this company reached out to me and asked if I would do a review on this product, and I said, sure, why not? So I'm just going to try to give you my honest opinion and general impressions, and we'll give this thing a test and run it through its paces. So what would any self-respecting product review be without an obligatory uh, unboxing? Let's take a look at the packaging here. In addition to the standard OBD functions, like most code readers do, this one has some pretty advanced features, including the ability to reset uh, electrical parking brake, battery management systems, steering angle sensors, diesel particulate filters, and tire pressure monitor systems and things like that. All these different manufacturers of vehicles. OBD2 compliant since 1996. And as noted here on the box, this tool is made by Launch Tech Company Limited at cnlaunch.com or dbscar.com and it is made in China. So let's quickly get inside. Like a case. There's the unit itself. And a couple of cables. The case itself is a zippered case. Got some Velcro straps for securing the tool and uh, some pouches for the cables. There's also a brief quick start guide with a diagram of all the components and buttons. This is in English. It's like two or three other languages. I see some French in here and some German. And my first impressions of the unit itself is that it's, it's really rugged. This thing has got a thick plastic rubberized shroud around it. You know, a tool like this is probably going to have some, some uh, abuse and get banged around and dropped. That's a really, really good characteristic of a code reader that you're going to be using in a shop and might get banged around. On the top of the unit is the data port, and that is where the OBD2 cable plugs in. It's got these little thumb screws that you tighten just so that it won't, won't pull out. On the bottom, there's a little rubberized door or access panel, and it exposes a little micro SD card. This SD card it comes with is a SanDisk 4 gigabytes in this case. I presume that's where it stores the any data you may save, your freeze frame data or anything you might want to save for future reference, or you use that to, uh, to update the unit. It also has this USB port. You can also update the unit that way by connecting this directly to your computer. Uh, but here on the bench, I'm going to use this to power it up so we can start playing with some of the menu options before we take it out to the car. Some other observations that it comes with a nice big screen and it's got a screen protector. We can go ahead and peel that off. That's always fun to do with new electronics. This screen, let's measure it to see how big it is. Looks like it's a good four inch diagonal screen. It's got a row of quick access buttons here. There's one for quickly reading your diagnostic trouble codes, one to erase or clear those codes. There's an IM button. This is really nice for your inspection and maintenance. This will run all the, uh, the functions and the tests that your emissions testing station is going to run if you're subject to an emissions test like we are in Northern Virginia. And you can see whether or not you're going to pass your smog test or not. So that's nice. Just a nice quick access button for that. Then there's a general help button. It takes you through several other things to um, look up what DTC codes are and other things like that. It's got a back button or a return button for returning to uh, navigating back to a previous screen. OK button to use to acknowledge and confirm an operation that you're getting ready to perform. And then you get your navigation buttons to scroll up and down through menus and options. Let's take a look at this cable real quick. So we should easily be able to connect this to the unit, plug this up under the dash. We have adequate length there. Let's just see real quick how how good this pouch is and how well it works. You should just stick your cables in these different pockets. USB cable goes in there. Yep. Pretty good. So to play with it a little bit here inside the house, I've got this uh, external USB power source. Just gonna plug that in and fire this up. So on the main screen, we've got four main options. There's the diagnose option. There's the record option for managing recorded data, settings, and help. Let's look under the diagnose option by hitting the OK button. Here we have two options, the, all the OBD2 functions. If I hit that, it's going to try and talk to the computer in the car, which you don't have connected right now. And then the reset function. If we jump right into the reset function, this is one area where this scanner shines above uh, much cheaper ones. And that's all these advanced options for 
resetting things like uh, bleeding the brakes, changing your battery. For your BMW owners, if you go swap out your battery for a lead acid battery, you need to reset the computer in the car to know that it has a different kind of battery and to test it and know how to charge that battery. So that's going to be really handy. Brake pad light, again for you BMW guys, a brake pad light, you can reset it with that. Diesel guys, this is a diesel particulate filter option. When you replace that filter, you can reset that light with that option. ETSC, I think that has something to do with throttle body. IMMO, that's a way of programming your remote keys. Injector coating. Oil lamp reset, Mercedes guys, BMW guys, German cars. If you get an oil light that tells you it's time to change the oil, that's what that would reset for you. Steering angle reset and TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. If you replace a uh, one of those little transmitters on the valve stem and you need to reprogram the computer to recognize that particular one, you can use that. Pretty fancy stuff. So I'm going to go back, go back out to the main menu. Managing your recorded data. You can review uh, recorded DTCs if you have any. It says there is no recorded data. Obviously, we haven't done that yet. You can review recorded data stream and free freeze frame stuff. Delete those respective things and upload that particularly, I guess, to your computer or to the car. I don't know. Here's some settings. You can change the language. We're going to keep it at English. Your units of measure. I'm here in the States, so I'll use imperial measurements. You can also use metric. There's the little beeper that you hear as I'm navigating. You can turn that off if you don't like it. And the record mode is currently off. All right, and let's see what help has for us. There's help. Shows you where your DLC is. That is the connector under your dashboard. That just gives you some information that your DLC, the data link connector or the OBD2 connector under your dashboard is typically right there under the steering wheel somewhere or on the driver's side. This down arrow tells me we have more information and we can scroll down. Let's go back. So if we go into the DTC library, you can look up codes by their number. Oh, here we go. So we have a 0240. Let's say that's a code that we want to look up. It tells you that it's a generic turbocharger, supercharger, boost sensor, something or other performance range problem. So that's kind of an interesting uh, reference. Abbreviations. If you don't know what those abbreviations mean, you can look them up. That's what they mean. Tool information gives me all that. Information about the boot version and my serial number and whatnot. And what is OBD2? OBD2 modes, that might be interesting. Oh yeah, so this gives you information about what all the different modes are. All right, let's take this out to the car and play with it a little bit more. So what we're looking at is a 2003 Honda Accord and its check engine light has been on for quite some time. I have a fair idea what's going on. This, this car has a considerable oil consumption problem, but it doesn't smoke. But I thought this would be a good candidate to see what this OBD2 reader would uh, reveal for us. So the data port on this car is under the left edge of the dashboard, right about here. And if you look under here, you can clearly see it. Once we plug it in, it powers on. All right, now we're up to our main menu. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the ignition key on so that it can read and communicate with the computer. Let's pick Diagnose and click OK. Several of these options say Fail. Fail, fail, fail. Then we get this one that says OK. Now we get the monitor status screen. MIL status is on. That's the check engine light is on for sure. DTCs or diagnostic trouble codes in this ECU. We've got one code. So, push the OK button. It's got an OK prompt down here. Pick the first option, Read Codes. Click OK. And it's telling us I got a P0420 Catalyst System Efficiency Below Threshold Bank 1. And we got prompts down here with a back button, question mark, and OK to save. So I'm going to hit the question mark button down here. And it gives me a little explanation. P0420 Catalytic Converter also called as catalytic purification converter, is an exhaust purifier which uses catalyst's effects to convert CO, H2, and NOx in exhaust to harmless gas. You can see that the uh, English translation is not perfect, but it's not bad. Page down button so we can read some more. All right, so it looks like I've got 
an O2 sensor or catalytic converter issue that I got to deal with. I'm going to hit the back button. Now I don't want to erase the code yet. So let's go down here to the freeze frame option. And hopefully that'll give us the uh, the readings from the computer at the time that code was set. I'm going to click OK. DTC that caused the required freeze frame data store to P0420. Short term and long term fuel trim, minus 4, minus 6% respectively. Can I scroll down? Engine RPM, absolute throttle position, relative throttle position. So I think the things that are going to be the most useful here are those uh, fuel trim numbers. All right, let's go back. An O2 sensor test. Let's try that. Click OK. Bank 1, sensor 1. The vehicle does not support. Aw. OK. Let's try bank 1, sensor 2, just for kicks and grins. The vehicle does not support. Going back. Onboard monitoring, EVAP system test. Let's try that for fun. Evaporative system leak test passed. Sweet. So for this car, the most uh, interesting thing was that I've got that freeze frame data that went with my P0420 code. That gives me a little bit more information about what might be the cause. And let's do some more experimentation here with this, our 2007 Acura RDX. Data port is on the same uh, location as on that Honda Accord. So there's no check engine light on in this car right now, but let's go ahead and try out the, uh, the DTC shortcut button. Let it go through its paces. Again, we're getting fail indicators on these systems that this car does not support. This vehicle has no fault codes. That's what we want to hear. The other thing I want to try, and I wish I'd done that on the Accord. Unfortunately, my daughter's taking that car back to school. But I want to use the IM button and uh, see what's going on with the emissions uh, systems. So it's giving me all this good information that uh, the misfire monitor is okay, fuel system monitor is okay, all these systems are okay. We're looking at items 1 through 8 of 10. I'm going to scroll down to see the remaining 2. Oxygen sensor heater monitor is okay, and the EGR not applicable on this car. Right, let's look at some of the real-time things under the Diagnose menu, OBD2. Let's go down to Data Stream. So now we're looking at real-time data. Fuel System 1 status is CL, closed loop. Engine coolant temperature sensor 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Short-term fuel trim is 0.8%. Long-term fuel trim, minus 1.6%. That's nice to see. Now we're looking at data points 1 through 8 of 35. So we can scroll through these. Pause the video if you're, if you're curious. So let's go back to... You can select specific items to look at. So if you just want the fuel system status, click OK to check that one. And if you just want to look at your short and long term fuel trims, we'll check those two. And then we will click the back button and we see just those values in real time. You can also look at graphic items. This is pretty neat. So let's take a look at uh, some things we can graph. We'll graph that. We'll graph that. Manifold pressure, engine RPM. It looks like you can... Uh, you can monitor up to four data points at one time. That's graphing that in real time. And blip the throttle and watch the graph change. Bring the RPM up to about 2,000. The onboard monitoring, catalytic monitor, status pass, EVAP monitor, pass. All right, that's the extent of the OBD2 diagnostic menu options. So let's wrap this up and talk about some pros and cons. I like the large screen. Definitely like the the rugged nature of the case and how it's constructed. Gives you a nice, nice firm grip. You're not gonna, not gonna likely drop it or have it slip out of your hands. The basic functions are really easy to perform. The diagnostic, reading the trouble codes and things, especially with these shortcut buttons, and for erasing your codes and that type of thing, knowing whether or not you're ready for your emissions test, I and mean, that stuff is just drop dead easy to do if you're doing those basic functions. Carrying case is certainly adequate. Cable's definitely long enough. 
And it's got some advanced functions that uh, you only find on more expensive code readers, such as graphing live data, reading live data, and all of those reset functions for you know specific cars and German cars and all those different things. I suppose you could also consider the cost as one of the pros. As of this recording, Amazon is selling this unit for just under $290. So since this thing has many functions that you only find on more expensive units, that's potentially a really good price. Especially if you're in a really advanced do-it-yourselfer, more than just basic things. Now let's look at some of the cons. The first thing I ran into, like I often do when I pick up a piece of electronics or a computer or things like that, is I look to update the firmware. So I went right here to page two and it says to update and register this unit, go to this URL, dbscar.com and download the update tool to install it on this computer. But I'll show you in a second, I went to their website and couldn't even find this product listed anywhere. The website was non-intuitive, and no matter what I did, no matter what searching I did, I could not find the update software for this unit. So, so I can only assume that's gonna be something that they're gonna correct fairly soon and make the update available online for this unit. Obviously, if we're with something this advanced, as a new car year models come out, you're gonna to wanna to be able to update the tool. I just found that a bit frustrating. Also on the con side is this is the extent of your user manual. They don't uh, have a link in here to a PDF or anything with a more extensive uh, guide as to how to do advanced diagnostics. So I guess that's just up to you to learn how to do. And just like we mentioned under the pro column, I can, we could just as easily mention that the cost is a con. If you're your average do-it-yourselfer, you just want to be able to read codes, do some general, very general diagnostic and reset your check engine light for basic things. And you're not interested in live stream data or plotting data or doing some of those advanced things, looking at your fuel trims to see what's going on with a lean condition. If you're not doing any of that stuff, this is definitely more than you need. At $290, you could have a whole suitcase full of cheap code readers that would do what you need. Those won't be able to do anything near what this can do, but that cost might scare you away. So to wrap this up, I want to send a big thanks to Launch Tech for sending me this to do a review of the Sea Reader 9081. I hope it was helpful to you on making your buying decisions. I know I'll be using this in the future. Maybe you'll see it in some of my future videos. As for now, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.